There are thousands upon thousands of religions worldwide, but some are definitely more well known than others. Welcome back everyone, thanks for tuning in to another video. My name is Kennedy and today on Most Amazing we are going to be delving into some of the most unknown, obscure, and mysterious religions that are practiced around the world. So let's dive in. First up in our number 10 spot, the Rallian Movement. Founded in 1974 by a man named Cloud Varillon, who now goes by Rawl, the Rallian Movement falls into the category of what is referred to as UFO religion, which means it involves alleged encounters with extraterrestrial beings. Now, there are many other UFO religions out there, and we will get to a few more, but the basic belief with Rawlism is that humanity was created by advanced extraterrestrial beings through genetic engineering. According to their beliefs, an alien species known as the Elohim visited Earth in ancient times and created humans using their advanced scientific knowledge, and the founder, Rawl, claims to have had several encounters with these beings and was chosen to deliver their message to humanity. When it comes to the beliefs and principles, Rawlism advocates love, peace, compassion, and non-judgment through everything from sexual liberation to environmental issues, and they strongly advocate for the ethical use of cloning and genetic engineering to improve human life with the goal of immortality. However, during the 90s, the group came into a scandal in regards to their religious symbol that appeared to mirror that of the World War II German army. Rawl claimed that the symbol was what he had seen on the spaceship and was in no way affiliated with fascism. However, it was changed with permission of the Elohim and to respect victims of the atrocities that symbol represented. Moving on to number 9. Pastafarianism. Founded by Bobby Henderson in 2005, the central premise of this religion is that an invisible and undetectable spaghetti monster created the universe after a long night of drinking. They claim that it was his intoxicated state that caused the universe to be flawed, and believers parody mainstream religions with their further assertion that all evidence for evolution was planted by the monster as a test to the Pastafarianism. Safarian faith. Now, there is a bit of a catch. It's less of a serious religion and more so a social movement designed to critique the teaching of intelligent design and creationism in public schools. It all began after the church's founder wrote an open letter to a school board in Kansas, arguing that if they taught established religious alternatives, they should also teach Pastafarianism. Pastafarians believe that pirates are sacred beings, reject dogmatism, and instead promote open-mindedness and the value of skepticism and critical thinking, and view the deity as a supernatural entity that resembles a giant mass of spaghetti and meatballs. Now interestingly, despite its humorous beginnings, Pastafarianism has gained some attention and some members have engaged in legal battles to have it recognized as an official religion in certain contexts. Overall, however, it remains a lighthearted and playful commentary on the intersection of religion, education, education and freedom of expression. Moving on to number 8, the Aetherius Society. Another UFO religion, the Aetherius Society was founded in the 1950s by George King, who claimed to have been contacted by beings from Venus to whom he referred as cosmic masters. These cosmic masters are described as being enlightened beings who have evolved beyond the need for physical bodies, and King claimed he served as the primary channel for the society's teachings until his death in 1990. The religion's goal is to prevent worldly destruction by improving cooperation between humanity and the cosmic masters by using spiritual energy to improve the spiritual caliber of our world. They also believe that we must prepare the way for the next master, who will descend upon Earth in a flying saucer, possessing magic more powerful than all the world's armies. Which sounds a little frightening to me. While the theory society is relatively small compared to mainstream religions, it does have a global presence with followers all over the world. Coming in at number 7, Jediism. 
Yes, it is what it sounds like. Also known as Jedi religion or Jedi faith, Jediism is a modern day spiritual movement inspired by the fictional Jedi Order depicted in Star Wars. The movement gained some attention in the early 2000s when a significant number of people identified their religion as Jedi on a national census. And while initially considered humorous or symbolic, there is actually a small population that consider themselves serious Jedi practitioners. In the faith, there is no real leader, but the beliefs follow a similar structure to the fictional religion of the Jedi. The Force, for example, is interpreted as a symbol of the interconnectedness of life and a source of spiritual guidance. While the religion emphasizes principles such as peace, knowledge, serenity, self-discipline, and the pursuit of wisdom as a means of spiritual growth and enlightenment. Similarly to the role of the Jedi Knights, Jediism advocates for non-violence, and peaceful resolution of conflicts. But unfortunately, there are still no real life lightsabers. Moving on to number six, universe people. A Czech UFO religion founded in the 1990s by Ivo Benda, Benda claimed he experienced several direct personal contacts with alien civilizations, which led him to establish the movement. The universe people believe in the existence of a galactic confederation of advanced civilizations that are working together for the betterment of the universe. And according to Benda, ET civilizations operate a fleet of spaceships that closely watch and are waiting to transport their followers into another dimension. The universe people's teachings incorporate various elements from you ufology, Christianity, and conspiracy theories, but overall universe people fight against modern technologies and negative ideas while spreading love and positivity. They consider mass media to be a tool of oppression and manipulation, although Benda still seeks contact with journalists to tell his ideas to the public. Further, they often have problems with copyright infringement because Benda has declared that the only copyright owners are the universe creatures who do not consider this important. Coming in at number five, the Prince Philip movement. On the southern island of Tana in Vanuatu lives the Yonanan tribe who worship the late Prince Philip. Now at first the religion might appear to be entirely persuaded by colonization, but that is only a piece of the story. Before their contact with colonizing societies, the Yonanan people told ancient tales about a pale-skinned mountain spirit who traveled overseas to a distant land. There, he would marry a powerful woman and in time return to them. Fast forward a bit and the community began to see photographs and clippings in nearby police stations showing Prince Philip, who had indeed traveled to marry a powerful woman. Then in 1974, when Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip made a royal visit, the Yonanan saw them and believed their mountain spirit had returned with his bride, as legend foretold. As you can imagine, when Prince Philip died, the sect mourned his death deeply, and over the following weeks, villagers met periodically to conduct rites for whom they see as a recycled descendant of a very powerful spirit or god that lives on one of their mountains. And many of the tribesmen believe that while his body lies at rest, the Duke's soul will return to its spiritual home in the island of Tana. Moving on to number four. Pana Wave. A Japanese religious movement founded in 1977, the Pana Wave group was led by Yuko Chino, who claimed to have received messages from beings on Venus warning of an impending cataclysmic event that would lead to the destruction of the Earth. Starting in the mid 1980s, members calling themselves the Scientific Faction began spreading their message warning of the evils of electromagnetic waves and built the Pana a wave laboratory in an area they believed was less at risk from the electromagnetic pollution. Then beginning in the mid 90s, members started to dress only in white in the belief that this would protect them from harmful electromagnetic waves as well. The group believed that they could escape this impending apocalyptic disaster by living in specially constructed underground shelters to protect themselves from the electromagnetic waves as well as any other perceived threat. But overall, the group was viewed as a doomsday cult by many, and since the death of the leader, its prominence appears to have diminished. Moving on to number three, Temple of the True Inner Light. 
Founded in 1980 by Alan Birnbaum, the Temple of True Light is a Christian offshoot organization unlike anyone I have ever read about. The main belief of this Manhattan-based religious group is that psychoactive substances are seen as the true flesh of God. To be more specific, temple followers believe that a variety of psychoactive substances used as sacrament are the actual manifestation of God, not just a means to access God. Further, the organization believes that all religions are based upon the psychedelic experience. Their practice involves revisiting the Old and New Testament and re-examining the texts to prove evidence of psychedelics, and admission into the church involves a screened personal interview. Following approval, all sessions are conducted in the temple semi-privately, where members listen to biblical tapes after ingesting the psychedelics. Now, there is a lot of critique on this religion, with many accusing it as being more of a cult than a proper religion, and I can definitely see the argument. The temple itself claims if you do not belong to their temple, you cannot receive salvation. Plus, the whole entrance interview situation is, well, you know, not a great sign. Coming in at number two, Heaven's Gate. Founded in the mid-1970s by Bonnie Nettles and Marshall Applewhite, Heaven's Gate was an American cult with a truly tragic ending. Based on a unique combination of Christian theology, UFO conspiracy theories, and New Age spirituality, Heaven's Gate promoted and believed that human bodies were merely containers for their souls, and preached that followers could transform themselves into immortal, extraterrestrial beings by rejecting their human nature and would therefore ascend to the next level or the evolutionary level above being human. The founders, Bonnie and Marshall, or T and Doe, respectively, presented themselves as representatives of a higher alien intelligence and claimed to have a mission to guide their followers to salvation. And sadly, as is all too common with cults, operated with strict control over its members' lives, including their thoughts, behaviors, and interactions with the outside world. Sadly, in order to get to this next level, Marshall convinced his followers to take their lives. And on March 26th, 1997, 39 members followed his orders and lost their lives to the cult. And last up in our number one spot is the Church of Euthanasia. Founded by Chris Corda and Robert Kimberg in 1992, the Church of Euthanasia is considered the world's only anti-human religion. The main theology is that overpopulation is the root of all the world's problems, and they promote a gruesome solution through voluntary euthanasia as a means to save the planet. The church stresses population reduction by voluntary means only, and rejects homicide and eugenics as a means of achieving it, but it's still a wild concept. While of course it's not mandatory to take your life to be a part of this church, it is encouraged. However, they do have one commandment that must be followed, do not under any circumstances procreate. If you do, you will be excommunicated. Honestly, there is a lot more insane stuff built into this religion, or cult, but I can't even get into some of the stuff they encourage, but just know it's a lot. Since its creation, there has been a lot of pushback for some pretty understandable reasons. While overpopulation is certainly an issue that we are actively dealing with, many feel that the ethics behind encouraging and promoting self-harm is just not the way to go about it. Well, that's all I have for you today, friends. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.